Yeah, hello and welcome back to the channel. After a long delay, I have found some time again to uh, do something for the channel and I still owe the adherence of value added tax some sample cases with master solutions. That was a long time ago when I promised that and um, I hope you didn't despair in the meantime, but um, here are these cases now. But before we begin, we should remember the testing scheme for value-added tax cases under German law. That was first taxability. So if something can be covered by value-added tax law at all, <clears throat> then if there is a tax exemption or if the event is really liable to tax, then next question, if it's liable to tax, we need a tax base and a tax rate and a tax amount. Then we come to the formalities, how the tax is paid. And the nice word paid remains, uh, reminds us of what different details here have to be examined. The taxpayer, the arisal of the tax, the invoicing rules and the declaration duties where are invoicing rules and declaration duties are usually not so much of important. No, that was definitely no English. They are usually not very important. There are some peculiar cases when there might be a remark necessary. Usually it's uh, always the same stuff. And um, there might be peculiarities of this particular case, for example, that the invoice was written wrongly or so. And last but not least, input tax claims of the people involved. So that is nothing else than the basic structure. And so we should have a look to our first case. So Carlos Caron is a car trader who has established his business at Kleve in Germany. Naturally, we want to have a simple case for starting. And on the 1st of March in year one, the customer band Beimann from Bettbockau, that's a small town near Kleve in Germany, enters his car shop in Kleve and wants to buy a new car. Well, after some negotiations, band Beimann signs a contract by which he orders a new car, a famous brand, brand for a price of 27 euro. And this car is then ordered by Carlos Caron in turn from the car factory and arrives at his shop at Kleve on the 31st of May. In year one, Carlos has to pay a price to the factory, 10,000 plus VAT, so 11,900 for buying that car. Carlos now immediately takes a telephone and gives notice to Bernd Beimann that the car is now ready here and available and Bernd happily drops in and takes the car home on the 5th of June of year one still. Now Bernd pays the price for the car by bank transfer afterwards on the 10th of June. He had, however, to make our case a bit interesting, made a down payment of 5,000 already when he signed the contract or to be precise, two days after he signed it so that he only had to pay the remaining amount of 15,000 afterwards, that is now in June. So, and now the question, tell us the truth, the complete truth and nothing but the truth, or to put it more clearly, treatment of this events under German VAT law is how? So just to illustrate that a bit, that is what happened. A car is simply sold for 20,000 euro and nothing else happens. So the first step, taxability. There we have to check either paragraph one, one number one, that's the usual case. Well, number five, that would be a so-called intra-community acquisition from another EU member state. That's not the case, so we have to check one number one. The first question is, therefore, is Carlos an entrepreneur? And the answer is yes, under two, one, sentences one and three, because he acts independently, is aiming at revenue, and has a sustainable or constant activity. Um, 
here. Does he act within the range of his enterprise here too? The answer is yes. Selling cars by a car trader is core business. That's clear. It's the main business. Is it done for consideration? Yes, he demands a price. So we come now to the more interesting question. Is it is a delivery of a good or is it a service? Well, let's hope it's a good car or even if it's a bad car. A car is defined as a good. It's a tangible good. And handing over ownership is a delivery. Yes, car is a good. And ownership changes. So paragraph 3, 1, USDG is fulfilled. It's a delivery. The place of the delivery is the transaction attributed to the inland. And that is under paragraph 3, 6, sentence 1, where the movement or transport or dispatch of the good in question to the customer begins or by the customer begins. That's no difference here. That's Kleve. And Kleve is definitively in the inland from the perspective of value added tax. That is no surprise. So we end up with the simple insight. This is a taxable transaction in Germany under paragraph 1, one number 1, USDG. The second question is if there is a tax exemption that would have that needs us or that requires to check paragraph four of the list of tax exemption and there is no tax exemption uh, which could be seen so it's liable to tax then we need to tax base and under paragraph 10 one sentences one and two the tax base is the net amount. That is all what the entrepreneur gets. So the gross amount minus the VAT amount included therein. And if we apply that to that situation here, 20,000 gross minus a VAT amount of 19, 119th of 20,000 and there a number comes out and that number is 1680672. Now the tax rate under paragraph 12.1 is 19% because no reduction under no reduced rate under 12.2 applies. So tax is 19% of 16.80672. And this should be, if everything's okay, 30, uh, 3,190.28 euro. Um, that's it. So number five, the formalities. The taxpayer is the entrepreneur of 13a1 number one so here that's um, Carlos Caron uh, because paragraph 13b does not apply that would be the exception where by in special cases the customer has to pay the tax that's not the case here um, the arisal of the tax under paragraph 13, one, number one, letter A, the tax arises, so becomes to exist the tax liability when or at the end of that preliminary declaration period, that is the month in Germany usually, during which the delivery was made. Which the delivery. So 
during which the delivery was made. Sorry for um, <laughs> stammering, but I had a problem with the technology. The keyboard didn't react, and so I had to begin again. Um, so that was in June, 30th of June, 01. But then the down payment was already to be taxed when it was made. Paragraph 31, number 1, letter A. Um, again, I believe it's sentence 4. We should look it up in a calm and quiet minute. So, tax included in 5,000 should have been paid already in, when was the contract made? Um, the 1st of March, so the payment was also made in March. And so included in 5,000 euro, there was already included VAT of 798.32 on 41.42.168 net amount, so that only um, only 3928 minus 79 remained to be paid in March. And that is 2,460.96. Invoice, no peculiarities. He has to write a regular invoice under the rules of paragraph 14 USDG. Naming all and declaration duties, okay. Um, as usual, nothing special, no peculiarities. And is there any input tax refund claim? Yes, Carlos can claim input tax under paragraph 15.1, number one for the car in. The moment when he got the car, so in May 01, for the 1900, which he paid as VAT for the car. And that's plain and simple, and that's it. Case finished and solved.